Hey everybody, it's CJ. So today we're going to be covering the K-Wing. The K-Wing is the third ship in the uh, in Wave 7. It is the only rebel ship in Wave 7. And it and the TIE Punisher are both there. In Wave 7 they sort of push bombs to the forefront. So we're going to go ahead, we're going to talk about that, and we're going to take a look at it today. So the first thing you're going to be seeing here is the spread for the K-Wing. And obviously you're going to see a, a couple new bomb tokens there, some uh, extra munitions tokens, shields, stress, a couple ions, some target locks, the base tokens, and stuff like that. You can see there's a lot of stuff that does not look like it is repeats because this is one of the ships that Wave 7 had a lot of ships that didn't have a lot of repeats in them as far as upgrade cards. So we're going to start our... Uh, we're going to start this today with the Warden Squadron Pilot to get our baseline for the K-Wing. The Warden Squadron Pilot is Pilot Skill 2. The baseline on the K-Wing is 2 attack with a turret, 2 primary weapon turret, 1 evade, 5 hull, and 4 shields. Its actions are focus, target lock, and slam, which we'll go into later. And its upgrade bar contains a turret, 2 torpedoes, a missile, a crew, and 2 bombs. The Warden Squadron Pilot is 23 points. So if you're building a bomb-based K-Wing, such as a Sabine K-Wing, which would have three bombs and you get extra munition up to six. So, so if you're building a bomb-based K-Wing, the Warden Squadron Pilot is actually your way to go because he's going to move before everybody. And in doing so, he actually is able to move in front of ships drop bombs and then that ship has to fly over the bombs so he's actually a good blocker he's good for if you're going that route of, of going with a tanked up bomb dropping ship this is the way to go the actions on it as far as the focus target lock and slam you may use slam from time to time on a pilot skill too it's probably not going to come in as often you're going to see more your focus and target lock being used and we'll go into what everything does here in, in a minute. Um, in fact, actually, thinking about it, you're probably going to use the bomb one because you're going to want to drop stuff like um, proximity mines and cluster mines, which don't move off the table, and you just kind of clog up lanes with them. So the next K-Wing pilot here is the Pilot Skill 4 Guardian Squadron Pilot. Guardian Squadron Pilot is Pilot Skill 2, or sorry, Pilot Skill 4, Primary Weapon 2, Turret, Evade 1, 5 hull, 4 shields, focus, target lock, and slam. And its action bar, or its upgrade bar is the same. Turret, 2 torps, a missile, crew, and 2 bombs. And it's 25 points. Essentially here you're looking at a 2 point upgrade for 2 pilot skill. It's really not that big of a payoff on the, on the Guardian because with the K-Wing you're either looking to have a someone who is built around a high pilot skill pilot, for example, such as one of the next next two, who can use the slam action to get out of arcs, or you're looking at someone who is, excuse me, or you're looking at someone who is really low pilot skill to block and to drop bombs. The Guardian, because he doesn't fill either of those roles, he sort of falls into a weird spot in the middle there where he doesn't get a lot of use, and he's probably not going to see a lot of use. Um simply because he's not really good for the ship's role. So our next pilot here is a Sieg Tuketu. A Sieg is a pilot skill 6, named pilot. A Sieg is, has all the same, sorry, a Sieg has the same stat line, same action bar, and same upgrade bar as the other K-Wings. A Sieg is 28 points, so you're paying 2 points for pilot skill and one point for a Sieg's ability. And a Sieg's ability is when another friendly ship at range 1 to 2 is attacking, it may treat your focus token as its own. So, this is an interesting ability because a Sieg essentially gives you a free focus on the table when you focus with a Sieg to get to. And you could, for example, put a recon specialist on a Sieg, so now you pull two focuses a turn and yeah, it 
gives him a lot of flexibility. The thing about this though is you need to have that one to two bubble and also a Siege of Pilot skill six. He's still in a K wing. He's going to be hard to stay with because of the slam ability, because of the way K wings work. Otherwise though, I've seen some builds like a fat Han with a Sieg Tuketu to where Han is able to feed off of a Sieg for focus. So if Han can evade and then he has focuses to use off of the Sieg. And the final pilot for the K-Wing here, and this is the, the most well-known pilot out of them, is Miranda Donnie. Miranda is pilot skill 8. Stat line's the same, action bar's the same, upgrade bar's the same. Miranda is 29 points, so it's a 1 point jump for 2 pilot skill. And the ability's already in there, so it's a 2 point jump. And Miranda's ability is once per round, when attacking, you may either spend one shield to roll one additional attack die or roll one fewer attack die to recover one shield. So Miranda's interesting because Miranda can essentially dictate how... Should I put this? Miranda can dictate whether or not Miranda is going to get shields back or if... Miranda is going to be firing with one additional attack die. So with a primary attack two, you can throw a turret on there. Um, you can throw something like a blaster turret if you really felt like it, but I wouldn't. Or a twin laser turret, which is pretty much all the rage now. And you throw a twin laser turret on there, range two to three, your three attack dice, you do one damage if you hit, regardless. So you can pump that up to four dice one time if you really need to or you can drop it one time to three from three to two dice gain a shield back and then your second attack with the twin laser turret because it shoots twice is back at three dice it's a pretty interesting ability it's another shield regen ability which has become the rebels thing lately so i'm surprised miranda quite frankly didn't make it to top tables at worlds as far as like the top two, I'm surprised about a lot of things actually. Um, as far as Miranda, I'm surprised we don't see Miranda more often because Miranda is a beast. Miranda, it's a nine health ship that can regen shields on its own. It doesn't even need, because it has a turret, it doesn't even need um, to keep you an arc or anything like that. It's just every turn, oh look, I'm going to regen a shield. It's a really good ship, really nice ability. I think it might actually be under-costed, but then again, shield regen has become the rebel thing, as where action denial and um, stuff like that seems to start, uh, the Imperials are starting to, to edge into that. So then we're going to go ahead and go into the K-Wing style. Now the K-Wing has a very small dial, well, actions wise or however wise you want to put it. Um, it has one straight and one bank green, two straight green, two bank, two hard turn white, and then three straight and three bank green. So it has only one hard turn, it has two, three soft turns, it only has four green maneuvers, it really doesn't handle stress well. What lets it become maneuverable is the slam action. And we're going to go over that right here. The slam action is ships with the slam icon on their action bar may perform a slam sublight acceleration motor action. To slam, choose and execute a maneuver on the ship's dial. The chosen maneuver must be the same speed as the maneuver that ship executed this round. Then assign that ship a weapons disabled token. A ship with a weapons disabled token assigned to it cannot perform attacks Weapons disabled tokens are removed during the end phase along with focus and evade tokens. Performing a slam counts as executing a maneuver. A ship cannot perform a slam as a free action. Alright, so essentially it gives you a second maneuver in the action phase, but it uses your action and you can't shoot. A lot of people looked at it and said, oh, it's really horrible, that's bad, it's not going to be good because you can't shoot after you do your maneuver. Then suddenly when it made it out onto the tables, people realize it's actually pretty good. One of the other things that they did is they gave you advanced slam. This is a modification. It's two points. This is the first upgrade card we're going to cover. 
and its modification after performing a slam action, if you did not overlap an obstacle or another ship, you may perform a free action. So this lets you essentially have pushed the limit for slam, which I think they did because of the fact that you cannot take push the limit on the ship. Um, because you're limited on what you can do, you have to do slam as your first action. It is a point less, but I do think that was the whole point of it was, okay, we realize people are not going to be able to, uh, realize people are not going to be able to push the limit on the ship. It really destroys the action economy. We need some way to fix that. Hence, advanced slam. So you have an advanced slam as the, the modification that comes with the ship. It's not K-Wing only, so there is a possibility of other ships that can slam. Just putting that out there. Next we have Bombardier. This is a crew card. When dropping a bomb, you may use the two straight template instead of the one straight template. Um, I don't think this is really too relevant of a thing because usually you drop a bomb and then you move or you drop a bomb and it's not a range bomb. It's a, you just drop it and go. So, I don't think that's really a, I don't think it's a, a, as big a deal as some people made it out to be when they showed it. It's giving you a little bit more reach with it, but it's really not that, you know, unless you're trying to drop, got, drop bombs specifically onto people, on, on other people, it's really not that relevant. So, then we have the upgrade, and it came with two of these. The upgrade that, that everybody clamored for when it's, when this ship came out. First of all, when this, when this upgrade was revealed, everybody said it's going to be horrible, it's going to suck in the meta, it's not going to do anything. Then the upgrade came out, and now everybody fears this. This card is the Twin Laser Turret. Twin Laser Turret is a turret, six points, three attack, range two to three. Attack. Perform this attack twice, even against a ship outside your firing arc. Each time this attack hits, the defender suffers one damage and then cancel all dice results. So, the relevance of this card is that I can attack you twice. When I attack you twice, odds are I'm going to strip tokens. It's not so much an attempt to hurt you as it is an attempt to set someone else up. Now, the other thing about it is, on ships like the Y-Wing, you can take four Y-Wings with with uh, twin laser turrets, and suddenly you are, well, you're doing horrible things to people. Because the first Y-Wing strips tokens off a guy, the other three just shoot him until he dies. Mind you, you're only putting three damage out there. Well, actually, you put two, four, six. You put six damage out there on someone, but... It is pretty brutal. It is it is actually pretty brutal the way that it works out. Um, the next upgrade card we have here, this is a missile. This is advanced homing missiles. It's a missile, three points. It's three attack dice, range two only. Attack, target lock. Discard this card to perform this attack. If this attack hits, deal one face-up damage card to the defender, then cancel all dice results. Okay, so, the way that advanced homing missiles work, essentially, is that it allows you to deal one face-up damage to your enemy, range two, you don't have to spend your target lock, so you can reroll dice for that, and that's it. I don't... Okay, I like the card on Lieutenant Blount. Um, that's because Lieutenant Blount, you can kind of jockey, range jockey with, with some people, get things set up to where you want them, and then, you know... Then you do what you do. With everybody else, this card's pretty hard to get off. You got one shot at it, and if you miss it, you miss it. Also, it's range two. It's very hard to get people in that two bubble. So, yeah, you have to you have to work at that. Um, the next thing we're going to cover here is Connor Nets. Connor Nets, well, Connor Net is a bomb. It's four points. It's action. Discard this card to drop one Connor Net token. When a ship's base or maneuver template overlaps this token, this token detonates. Now, what a Connernet does. A Connernet 
When this bomb token detonates, the ship that moved through or overlapped this token suffers one damage, receives two ion tokens, and skips its perform action step. Then discard this token. So there's been some FAQ rulings on it. I don't have the FAQ directly in front of me. I know Connernet has some really weird interactions because what if you drop it on the person before they move? Stuff like that. I think they still get their action, but everything else goes off. Um, so it's, it's, it's really weird the way that it works, but they covered it as best they could. Uh, I don't think they counted on some of the weird rules interactions with it, but they FAQ'd it pretty quick to make sure that it didn't stay a problem. The other one we have here is Ion Bombs. And Ion Bombs, the card reads, when you reveal your maneuver dial, you may discard this card to drop one Ion to Bomb token. This token detonates at the end of the activation phase. It's a bomb, it's two points, so it doesn't cost a lot. Um, and what Ion Bombs do, when this bomb token detonates, each ship at range one of the token receives two Ion tokens, then discard this token. So it doesn't do any damage. Which is great. It's, you know, yeah, you want stuff that does damage, but in all honesty, you don't need the ion token, the ion bomb to do it. This is setting up for another ship to come in and hit. Um, you know, you're setting up for some X Wings to make a run on someone. You're setting up for um, Talonbane Cobra to come in on someone. You're setting up for someone else to come in and hit really hard after you've ioned a bunch of people. Or also, you're setting up to get out of their arcs. So, the next card we're going to cover here is Plasma Torpedoes. Plasma Torpedoes is a torpedo, three points. It is four attack dice, range two to three. And it reads, attack target lock, spend your target lock, and discard this card to perform this attack. If this attack hits, after dealing damage, remove one shield token from the defender. Um, once again, it's all dependent on hitting, but if you roll... Let's say you roll three hits, the defender rolls two, so they take one damage. They lose a shield, then plasma torpedoes automatically strips a second shield off. Against Imperials, it's not that relevant, like, unless you're fighting like a Decimator and you can use these on the initial run. Also, I think this has more of a, a place in Epic play. Um, I could easily see these being mounted on a capital ship with ordnance tubes to allow it to hit the enemy and hit the other capital ship with it, get in close, hit the other cap ship and strip off shields as well as what it does. So you could theoretically strip all the shields off one section of a cap ship in one turn with this. The next and last card we're going to cover here is Extra Munitions. Extra Munitions is one of the torpedo bomb, um, it's one of the munitions fixes in the game. It's a torpedo, it takes a torpedo slot. It's two points. I really think it should have been a modification, but to each their own. When you equip this card, place one ordnance token on each equipped torpedo, missile, and bomb upgrade card. When you are instructed to discard an upgrade card, you may discard one ordnance token on that card instead. So this allows a lot of flexibility with some ships. It allows Y-Wings with bomb loadout to carry two bombs instead of one. It's, they're both the same bomb, but it allows them to carry two bombs instead of one. It allows um, the K-Wing to carry like four bombs and a bunch of two missiles and two torpedoes. It, it literally it adds value to stuff that already exists. So that's it for the K-Wing. Um, I really hope you enjoyed this. And uh, we're going to be covering the Thai Punisher next. Once the Punisher's covered, I'm going to be moving into the new core set. I know it's a little bit late, but I want to go ahead and get into that, get into Wave 8, or at least what they've already released, which is the Thai FO and the X-Wing, which really aren't Wave 8. They're almost like a Wave 7.5, but they lumped them together in one of the announcements with Wave 8, so they're part of Wave 8. And eventually we'll get around to the Gozanti and the Raider as well. So, y'all have a good one, and I'll see y'all later.